As we know, the feint of Williams as he is dealt to the Mavericks in a three-team sign and trade. The Celtics get two future second-round picks in return, and in addition, they create a $7 million trade exception. Okay, Chris Mannix from Sports Illustrated tweeted this after the deal. He said, Boston might not be done. They have Malcolm Brogdon's contract and a handful of first-round picks to deal, but on paper, as of now, they flipped Smart and Grant Williams for Chris Stapp's Porzingis, and it was a contract year version of Porzingis, meaning last year was a contract run for him. And if that's it, they got worse. Chris Gasper, Boston Globe, joining myself and Michael Holly. Gasper, your thoughts on this deal? Yeah, I mean, I don't mind this deal. You know, I think that what they wanted to do was retain some flexibility during the year. If you sign Grant Williams to this deal, if you match this deal, then you're over that second apron and you lose a lot of flexibility in terms of your roster. Like if you're making a deal during the year, it has to match dollar for dollar. Now you have a trade exception. It's about, you know, six and a half million. You could get a Patty Mills for that. You could get a Ricky Rubio for that. You could get a guy like Trey Mann. Let's say there's too many people in Oklahoma City. There are other players you could get to plug holes. If you did this, you were sort of locked into the roster as is, unless you dealt Brogdon. But even then, it's again, it would sort of have to be like a dollar for dollar deal. So you're not saving any money and you're going over that second name. Uh, can I just say something quickly? Yeah, yeah. Only in Boston would people say you traded Porzingis for Smart and Williams and got worse. Are you kidding me? I, I don't let, Grant Williams was getting DNP CDs from Joe Mazzulla in the playoffs. And I love Grant Williams. I was like, he should play. But Smart? And Grant Williams for Porzingis? <laughs> I think well, a lot of teams would do that. Well, I will say, that, but you, you do have to say they got worse only because, like, not, not from the smart part of the deal, okay. the Grant Williams part of the deal. Now, who do they have? And not that it's a big amount of uh, gas, I'm not telling you that, sure, but okay. eight points, four rebounds. And, and somebody who can come into a playoff game every now and then, match up with Jimmy Butler, and be representative on defense. Go into a game against Milwaukee uh, when they're leaving them open and make a bunch of three-pointers in playoff games. So, and defend Giannis. So, so don't have any – and I saw the stat coming from uh, Grant's people. You see this stat? Uh, second spectrum. In 295 half-court matchups with Giannis, <laughs> uh, he's done a really good job. So did yeah. Chevy Ogilvy, yeah, yeah, Exactly. Mean, but I would say and just I love from that – so is, is it worse? Because, yes, because they don't have anybody like that. Is okay. it like some they're cratering, they're falling off the map because they made this deal? No, I think that's, that's going okay. too far. They're not as deep. I mean, I think that's obvious. Sure. Okay. Yeah. But in terms of top of the roster, I, they're probably better. My question to you is, so they have an exception for a Ricky Rubio. Yeah. Those other players, like, yep. lost track of Rubio. I want to hear a forward, though. Patty, be a forward. Patty Mills. I want to hear a forward Mills. on there. Would you rather have Grant Williams or Ricky Rubio? Would you rather have Grant Williams or Patty Mills? I would rather have Grant Williams, but again, I think that they don't want to go over that second apron. And if something else happens along the way, an injury, let's say if they keep Brogdon on the roster or Derek White gets hurt, you don't really have flexibility at that point to fix your team. And if guys do stay healthy, which is a big if with yeah. the front line that they have. I mean, they are getting – Brad Stevens is all in on probably the most brittle front line in the NBA with Al Horford, who didn't play back-to-backs last year, Robert Williams, and Porzingis. That's a big gamble. Yeah. I don't deny that. But if those guys are healthy, tell me where the minutes for Grant Williams are. Well, where but, are they? And, and it's not just that front court. You're right. You know, those guys are, team are, will play the those four guys are brittle. In small ball lineups. Throw it in there. I said this to Felger uh, on the night when I thought it was going to be Brogdon for Porzingis. I said, you can't have Brogdon and Porzingis on your team. And you do. <laughs> so you got Brogdon, Porzingis. <laughs> Al Horford at 37, 38 years old, and play. Rob Williams. So now play. that's that's four guys. That's, that's four guys game. that you're really counting on. Um, so I think that's a factor, and uh, of that that exception, they have to use it this time. They got to use it. Yeah. Uh, they got to. They need a forward uh, who can come in and give you a little something. Right now, to think of your mind's eye, think of a rugged guy who can play defense and you know play a couple of positions. They don't have that. Sam Hauser can shoot. But they need somebody who can come in and defend. And, and uh, again, who's that? Okay, perfect example. Who's that Jimmy Butler guy this year? Not that uh, Williams did an am- amazing I job. I was going to say, like, was Williams a plus on Jimmy Butler? I don't know. Because he but really talked a lot of smack. He and talked, then Jimmy and, and got, then got animated in game two, and energized and, and won they lost game the game. Two for him. So was it really but, a positive? But if you need somebody to say, okay, Jimmy Butler's torching us, yeah. you check him. Who's that guy? I don't know, but honestly, and I love Grant. I wish they kept but that guy wasn't Grant Williams. To me, I look at this and say, I'm not saying you're better, but I can't buy that you're worse because I think you took – Even a little bit? Yeah, you're not as a deep. little bit. It's a, I mean, I think deep, not as deep, 
and worse to me are not the same thing. I, you're not as deep, but if the coach isn't going to use it, how many, how many minutes last year did Tatum and Brown average? Right. If the coach isn't going to use the depth, then what's the point of the depth? Yeah, the pressure's, the pressure's on Joe Missoula. It, it, w- it would have been on Joe Missoula to use Grant. Now the pressure is on him to use the roster that he has very wisely, and the pressure's on the front office, Felger, to use these, getting all these second-round picks. Yes. What they're trying to say is, we can't pay our seventh or eighth guy $13 million a year. So now we need to hit on some of these second round picks. And these guys have to be a part of the rotation. Well, that's the NBA going forward. And those forward. picks are what, that's gotta, what, if you have a trade exception, that's what gets attached to get the player. You've got to hit those guys. Because you can't send a player with the trade exception. So now you attach that. That's what they did for Evan Fournier. That's why those second round picks are valuable. Because now we have a trade exception. We send you the second round pick. You send us the player. We put him in the trade exception. Okay, it's one of the realities of having two max players or super max players. And yet, we still don't have word on Jalen Brown. According to Jared Weiss of The Athletic, part of the holdup on Brown's extension was the fact that the Celtics needed a resolution on Grant Williams first. Weiss also reports that the new Brown contract is more than just a number, and things such as incentives and player options complicate the deal. I I don't get why Grant Williams would have been a holdup, because why does Jalen Brown, like Jalen Brown's going to accept a different number or a different contract whether Grant Williams is here or not? It takes, it's not just the team saying, all right, Grant Williams is here or not. Now we'll do this. I mean, Jalen Brown doesn't give a crap about Grant Williams' money. I want what I want. I don't get why the two are related. You can explain that to me if they are. And do you agree with that second part? And what do you think the holdup is? Yeah, it's interesting. What's going to happen first? We get a word on Patrice Bergeron or Jalen Brown signs this extension? I don't know. I mean, what are the odds? Uh, I think maybe that first year number, the Celtics want to tweak a little bit, and Grant Williams might have been part of that. But if I'm if I'm Jalen Brown, why do I want anything less than the 35%? Right, exactly. Jalen Brown has to agree to it. So the Celtics can want all they want with Grant or Williams or without him. But Jalen Brown didn't give a crap about that. They can sort of appeal to him, Patriots, yeah. Brady style, and say, hey, in order for us to win, have a deeper roster, can you take a little bit less in year one, which I don't think he's going to do. Okay, right. well, what do you think the holdup is then? Yeah, you, you said you're confused, uh, Felger, by the holdup. The reason why you're confused? Because it's confusing, and there's, they're not related. I don't think they're related at all. And I'm going to go out of here. Let's see, today's July 5th, uh, and they can announce something on July 6th. I would not be surprised in the least that you fear you hear something tomorrow. 